Hey, hope you are having an awesome day. Yeah, the blimmin' had an interesting sleep last night. Our cat, the young cat coming in, must have come in about three or four times at different times in the night, and he comes up, and Terry Annie will sit there, and he'll pour at her hair, because he likes her curly hair, so he likes pouring it, and it wakes her up. And then if he doesn't get the result that he wants there, he comes over to me and he just licks my head. He just licks it. And, and you know, I can pull up a little bit, but when he keeps licking the same spot, those tongues of cats are hard. Anyway, he did it a bit too much and he got the old, put the old hand on top of him and just held him down and stopped that. So do you have fun with your cats or your dogs at night where they are um, doing, doing something similar? Just a bit of fun for the night to see us keep make sure that we are still alive and enjoying life. So today what I wanted to talk to you guys about and just touch on is the energy of anxiety and um, where people are getting caught with it. And the other thing uh, is about taking personal responsibility and taking charge of your life and not getting caught up in the energy of anxiety. Now, why I brought the, bring this up is because I, um, I had, had a new client start uh, doing some work with us yesterday, and the poor thing, they were riddled with fear through the anxiety on, uh, they had become a prisoner in their home due to the COVID thing, and they, they were in total fear base. And I went, wow, you poor things, you guys aren't even living. You're trying to be happy and have an existence, but you're so scared, you know, to the extent where they get their food delivered and it's like they wear gloves and put on their shirts and then they sterilize the box that it came in and they sterilize all the packaging that the foods in, and then they go and have a shower and sterilize themselves again. I go, guys, you're going a little bit over the top. Let's chill out. So when we look at the anxiety, we, we have to look at, well, hold on. Well, where's it come from? What is anxiety? And we, we know that anxiety is projecting a certain outcome out into the future. And then you go into the worry of that outcome coming true. And the, and the question that we must ask ourselves is, well, hold on. Why am I projecting that outcome into the future? What is it that I'm worried about? You know, what is it that that's causing this um, concern in me? And where am I looking at this outcome from? Am I actually present or am I, am I just caught up in the energy of fear? Or am I in the energy of blame and shame and justification and in that pain on not knowing how to get out and, and I'm fearful that I'm going to be caught in this uh, circle or this dialogue and I'm in doom and gloom. Now, one of the things that we look at here, when we look at the thing that we get caught in the doom and gloom and the, and the anxiety and the hurt and the sadness and the pain, one of the things we got to look at and, and ask the question, well, hold on a minute. I'm living inside this body. And so nothing generally happens to me unless I allow it to. So if I take personal responsibility for this and I begin to ask myself the question, well, hold on, if I'm in charge of my car, or I'm in charge of my bus that I'm driving here. Well, don't I have a choice on what I choose to focus on? Don't I have a choice on where to go? And then I can hear people screaming at me saying, no, Doug, but it's like this. I only think of this. And, and one of the questions I asked this client and the, the yesterday, I says, so what are you scared of? And they said to me, death. And I went, wow, death. Cool. That's a good one. So what are, what are you scared of? Why, why, do you, why are you scared of death? I'm scared of dying and missing out on life. And I asked the question and I said to them, well, are you living now? Are you in joy in your life now? Or are you worried about that you're going to die? And they stop for a moment. And that's all, all you need to get them to do is to stop for a moment and think about it. And allow the energy to unravel so that you can allow it to begin to change. 
And one of the questions that you've got to ask yourself, if you've got anxiety coming up, what are you focusing on? And if you're scared of some fear in the future, yeah, that's okay. Don't relax. Don't. I'm not going to try and stop you from having it. But I want, I want you to actually ask yourself a question. Why? Why are you actually scared of that? It hasn't happened yet. Why are you actually scared? And I'm going to show you a little process that I do to help people with this. I'm going to do you the gentle way because I've got two versions of it. And um, I don't want people going out and doing the um, <laughs> full-on version because it's um, uh, you may not hear what I say. And if you did that version, you'd only ever do it once. So what I want you to do, when you think about your anxiety or you think about the fear of what's coming up, because we know that an anxiety is just nothing more than a projection of something into the future. Out of infinite possibilities, you have chosen this possibility to be your outcome. It's not true, right, real. It's just a possibility that you are focusing on. And if you focus on that possibility, we know of energy in that, and we know where our mind goes, we tend to flow. If you look at a car, someone when some of them are driving a car and they get into a skid, they're sliding sideways and they're looking at the power pole, don't hit the power pole, don't hit the power pole, and they slide into the power pole because they steer towards it. We steer ourselves to what we believe or what we're thinking about. So one of the things that I want to... Um, to help you with and, and give you an insight to is when you get this uh, fear come up or the anxiety and the, the stress and that, and you look at it and you ask the question to yourself, what's the, um, you know, what is it that you fear? What is it? What are you scared of? And then label it. You can write it down if you want. Just label it. Then ask yourself the question, why? Why are you scared of it? Now, I'm not concerned about the answer here what we're looking at is the energy on how it pulls you down a rabbit hole and you go into your story and when you go into that story you'll find there'll be blame shame justification and a whole lot of victim energy and we know when we sit in that it's just yumbo oh god you feel so alive oh no that's right you don't you feel like crap down there don't you it feels heavy and shitty yet that's where it'll take you. And so the question here, you know, what I want you to do, uh, one of the steps I get people to do is actually imagine yourself in a room, in this room, and you're going to walk into this room, and this room is like the, the anxiety that you're walking into. So allow yourself to walk into the room, and it'll be dark, and allow yourself to go into the darkness room. You're just going to go through the door, and you go into where that anxiety is in that dark, and you have that, and you ask the question, what is it? What are you scared of? And you go ahead, and you name it and you, you can then say why. And then what I want you to imagine is you've got a light switch there beside you with a dimmer on it. Because I don't want to get too bright too fast because it'll scare the living daylights out of you. But what I want you to do is just imagine you turn the light on in that room and then turn the dimmer switch up. Now don't turn it up too slow because you'll start seeing shadows and that'll tend to scare you. Turn it up to a certain speed that your eyes can adjust and actually see what's going on here. And as you stay there with the anxiety, just stay here in this room of light. And as you stay in this room of light, notice what happens to that fear or that anxiety that you have. And if you if it stays there and it's still solid there, you can see it in all its glory. Have a good look at it. Turn the lights right up and then ask it, what's the truth? When you allow yourself to ask it, what's the truth? And you shine the light on it, you will begin to notice that it begins to start to crumble. Or there could be this, um, there will happen one thing, it will either dissolve into the light and let go, or you will find there will be a solid, rigid, piece of energy there and it'll be your thought construct and then you look at that and you can look at that thought construct that you have there and you ask yourself the question do I want to play with this do I want do I choose am I going to take responsibility and choose to play with this or am I going to go after what I want and another way of saying that same thing is if you are cold and you come inside and you want to warm up, what do you focus on? Do you focus on the cold outside? Or do you focus on what you need to do to warm yourself up? And I hear you say, well, I focus on what I need to do to warm myself up. Are you focused on the cold anymore? Or are you focusing on what you need to do to warm up? And you think about it, you go, well, yeah, if I focus on what warming up, what happens to the cold? Well, I forget about it. 
and I just focus on where I'm going. Same thing here with the anxiety. You have it in the room. You've turned the light up. What you're doing by turning the light up is you're becoming present. As you become present in the moment, you'll find that there won't be a problem. There never is. But when you go and you can see this fear that you have, but you see it there. Now, you can either stand in the room with the light on looking at this problem, at this piece of whatever it is, thought construct of doom and gloom, or you can go and sit on the couch, go get dinner, you know, whatever else is in the room. You've got all these options. But when it's lit up and you can see it in all its glory, you then have a choice. Do I want to focus on the crap or do I want to focus on what I want? You've got a choice. And, and it's interesting because as I'm talking to you here and I'm watching the energy of what's going on, a lot of you are turning the dimmer switch back down because you, um, you don't want to see what it is. And it's really interesting because this is a behavior and this is about the personal responsibility on, hey, you've got a choice. You can either leave the dimmer switch up so you can see it clearly and have it, let it sit in the light, or you can turn it back down and allow all the um, BS stories and illusions and non-truths come in and try and make up the mess. It's really interesting as I'm watching the energy telling you about doing this, about letting it go, because what's happening out of that old anxiety is all this cloud of um, smoke and darkness is coming into the light, but it keeps getting burnt off. The more you do that, the more you set yourself free. But it's a choice. It's a choice. And it seems simple, but all we're doing is playing with your imagination. And if you think about your anxiety, it's just in your imagination. It's just a thought construct. But the more that we do it, the more powerful it becomes. So, hey, have a go on those, um, those steps on allowing yourself to clear that out so you can um, sit in the anxiety and notice what happens. You'll find that you become present. You'll find that you'll just start feeling better because you're in the light. And yeah, that old irritation or that old fear, that anxiety will slowly but surely begin to melt away. When we do this, we find ourselves in a place of peace and we actually start attracting what we, what we want to do. So again, it's just a matter of, don't be scared, name it. Name what the fear is. Name it. Then ask yourself why. We're not worrying about the story so much. All we're doing is we are looking at the energy of it and then turn the dimmer switch up on in the room so that you just come into the light. And what you're doing like that is you're asking yourself, what's the truth? That's basically what's happening. And you're coming present into the moment. When you come present into the moment, the story will fall away and you'll just see that there's just the light there. You'll just, you'll just find things will get lighter. You'll feel better about yourself and you'll go, huh, and you'll wander on and then you'll walk off and you'll forget that what you've done and then it'll, you know you may have that feeling come up just keep doing this practice and you'll find what happens is the energy and that fear will lose power over you and that's called personal responsibility that's called strength that's called courage it takes courage to walk into the things it takes courage to turn the light up to see what's actually going on because when you turn the light up, you stop telling yourself the story that you're going to be um, be a victim to the blame, shame, or, or scarcity. And you actually hold yourself in that space. And when you do, oh, the sweetness of the beautiful energy just comes in. And when you sit in that purity, you set yourself free. Okay? So try it. Let us know, let us know how you go. And have an awesome day. Blessings.